In this video, I'm talking about how to use the Windows subsystem for Linux to compile Marlin Firmware 2.0, and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crossing Channel. Our mission is to help 1 million people in getting more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and enable bell notifications so you don't miss anything. So why a video about this topic? Recently, I discovered a problem compiling Marlin to zero bug fix on Windows, and I had this problem with Platform.io and in the same way with the Arduino IDE. Marlin to zero just wouldn't compile, and I was wondering what the heck is going on? So I really digged into it, and I also made this other video that explains why it doesn't compile because of a Windows limitation. And I was also saying I will be looking for workarounds. So this is one of the workarounds I found, the Windows subsystem for Linux. It's basically Linux on Windows 10, and it's not a virtual machine. It's more like a container, if that means anything to you. It basically means that it's closer to the actual Windows system, it's a thinner layer between those systems, and for example, Linux can use files directly that are stored in the Windows file system. And also this limitation I ran into, the 32K command length limit, doesn't exist in a Linux subsystem because yeah, it's Linux. Another improvement with version two of the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is just rolling out with Windows 10 version 2004, might be, and this is something to prove, it could be possible to flash Marlin firmware directly from Linux in the Windows subsystem for Linux too. In the current version that everyone has by today probably, the Linux subsystem doesn't have access to the USB ports. I just want to make sure you're ready for this. If you never used Linux before, please do yourself a favor and watch some guides about how to use Ubuntu for example, so you will know a little bit about the commands that I'm going to use in this guide, otherwise this might be much harder to grasp. So how do we get Linux running on Windows? The first step is super easy. You open up the Microsoft Store, which is the App Store for Windows 10. And there you start a search for Linux. So now you have to make a choice which Linux version you want. And to be honest, most of the time I choose Ubuntu because I think it's the easiest to use. But if you know another Linux distro better, you might also use that. So let's select Ubuntu and install it. And that's going to take a while, but once it's done, we can already try to launch it from here. But if you're doing this for the first time, it's just going to give you an error that the Windows subsystem for Linux component is not enabled. So we will close this window. There are two ways to enable the subsystem. The first one is actually explained in the description of the app in the App Store. So you can run this command in an administrator PowerShell prompt. If you know what that is, just go ahead and do that and reboot, but we're using the click path now. So that works like this. Right click on the start menu, select apps and features, then select programs and features. If you don't see that on the right hand side, just make this a little bit wider. And in the new pop-up, we select turn Windows features on or off. And in this list, I'm checking the Windows subsystem for Linux, so it's on. I say OK, and then we have to restart. So we're back and now we can start Ubuntu from the start menu. It's a new app. So this is going to take a minute. Then we create a username for this Linux system. So I'm just going to use Daniel. And of course, create a secure password like so the combination is one, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life. Okay, here we are at the Linux shell. The first thing to do here is to get the latest packages with sudo apt update. Here we have to use the password we just created. And after getting the latest package list, we can run sudo apt get install Python 3 disk utils to make sure we have Python 3 and all the tools to install platform IO. By the way, all the commands I'm using, you can copy paste them from the description of this video. After that's done, we install Platform.io using this command that I've taken from the official Platform.io webpage. It's downloading and installing a Python script that does all the magic. So Platform.io is ready in Linux on my Windows computer. What now? I have my Marlin sources on my C drive here in this folder. How can I start a build from the Linux environment? When you install Platform.io, the installer will show you the location of the Platform.io executable. I would copy this over to a notepad to remember it for later. So if you mark it, right click for copy, another right click and then hit enter, we see that the Platform.io is there and working. 
Let's switch to that source folder on the C drive now. In a Linux subsystem, the drives will be located in a folder named slash mnt. And below that, there is the C drive and the folder structure of your hard drive. So let's switch to that folder. And in that folder, we can run platform.io with the run parameter and minus E question mark to show the available environments. And that list is all the environments available. You need to use the one that fits your board. And this will be the same one shown to you if you open up the auto build mod and tab in Visual Studio Code. In case of the Ender 3 with the Creality main word, this would be Sanguino 1284P or MailC Optibute, depending on the code version you're using. So let's start the build using the right platform with the minus E parameter. That's probably looking familiar. It's the same output you normally get from the platform IO window in Visual Studio Code. So during the recording of this video, I discovered that sometimes the build might fail and the error looks a little bit strange. It tells me something about permission denied. And I figured out what the problem is. Sometimes the folder on your hard disk, which is in the Windows environment, doesn't have the necessary rights set. So Platform.io in the Linux subsystem cannot entirely access all of the files. So to fix that, there is a pretty easy solution you go back to the Windows Explorer and then you select the Marlin folder where your sources are in. So just go to the main directory where this subfolder is and then select with a right click the properties, then go to the security tab. And then for authenticated users, click edit and allow full control with okay. And then we go to advanced now and then we say replace all object permissions uh, to inherit them. So we select OK. That's going to set all the security settings for the subfolders as well. And when we now hit OK and we go back to Ubuntu, the Linux subsystem, and if we run that build again, the error will disappear. Yeah, so this is how it should look like when the permissions are set correctly. So this doesn't have to be for your case. And if it happens to you, you will know how to fix it now. And we have a successful build. This branch wouldn't build anymore directly from Windows, but inside of the Linux world, it works great. So where do we find our firmware? Let's scroll up a little to see what the outputs were. Here we go. So let's hop over to the Windows Explorer and look for that file. And there it is. Last thing left to do is to flash it to the main board. If you would be using an SKR mainboard, for example, the only thing to do would be to copy the firmware to the SD card and insert that into the mainboard and reset. But in case of the Creality mainboard and also the ANET mainboards, these don't have that level of comfort. We need to flash them the old style using either AVR Dude or a tool like Xloader, for example, that makes it a little bit easier. And there you have it. How to build Marlin firmware inside the Windows subsystem for Linux. As soon as WSL2 is available, I'm going to look into it if it supports flashing over USB, so make sure you don't miss that. If you're interested in more videos, I've linked two other ones here for you. Have a good week. Bye.